so welcome to mlt online classes in this lecture we are going to discuss about laboratory diagnosis of fungal samples so before going into the lecture let us discuss about previous lecture so what we learned in the last lecture we discussed about reproduction in fungus so how this fungus will reproduce they will reproduce either sexually or asexually so sexually the sexual spores are spores of uh, fungus are divided into four types what are those oospores zygospores deciduous and ascospores so then we discussed about asexual reproduction asexual reproduction is uh, mediated by mitosis and they have two types of spores in asexual reproduction what are those vegetative spores and aerial spores in vegetative spores we have blastospores anthrospores and chlamydia spores and in aerial spores we have these four types what are those conidia spores sporangia spores microconidia and macroconidia so these are the asexual spores and this is how the fungus will reproduce then coming to today's lecture in this lecture we are going to discuss about laboratory diagnosis right so let us see how this fungus will be diagnosed in the clinical laboratory so first we need to collect the sample so the fungal sample can be connected from nails hair skin even biopsies so first we need to collect a fungal sample so if we are going to collect from a skin then we need to go for scraping so first we will take a scapula and we will scrape we will scrap on the surface of skin and we will take a little bit of fungal sample and we will go for laboratory diagnosis so in laboratory diagnosis we have three methods to detect fungus so first one is direct microscopy so direct microscopy means you will take a fungus sample on a slide and you will observe under the microscope or you will go for culture so culture is for growth of the desired fungus so we will see whether the fungus uh, grown so we will culture the fungus and third one is tissue sections so these are the three methods we will perform in laboratory diagnosis what are those direct microscopy for culture and tissue sections so first let us see direct microscopy so in direct microscopy what we are going to do is first we will take the fungal sample on a clean glass slide and we will go for a minor preparations so the first one is kvh preparation so what is this kvh preparation kvh means potassium hydroxide so we will add a drop of potassium hydroxide to the fungal sample on the glass slide and we will observe on the microscope after placing the cover slip then we will observe fungal structures like hyphae yeast cells all these septum mycelia can be seen under the microscope directly after adding a drop of kvh so this is one direct microscopy but in the in kvh there is a problem sometimes these fungal hyphae are transparent and we cannot able to see any fungal samples because they are transparent in nature that is why we have a modified kvh preparation which is called calcofluor kvh with calcofluor so what is this calcofluor means it is a bright uh, substance that will give green uh, colorish to the fungus so it will bind with the fungus and it will give a green color under uv microscope so the fungal sample will will become bright so under kvh fungal sample will be bright and kvh with calcofluor fungal samples will be bright and we can visualize easily under the microscope then we have one more staining which is gram staining so some funguses are both gram negative and gram positive fungus are also there that can be determined by gram staining say for example our candida albicans candida albicans is a fungus which is gram positive in nature so for that we can even perform gram staining and last and finally is our indian ink preparation what is indian ink preparation means indian ink preparation is also called as a negative stain it will stain the background of the sample rather than the sample usually stains will stain the sample right here we have a specific uh, fungi called uh, cryptococcus neoforms and this cryptococcus neoforms has the polysaccharide uh, capsule so this polysaccharide capsule will won't allow any dye to penetrate so dyes cannot penetrate this particular uh, capsule but for that what we will do is we will stain the background by staining the background we can able to see the forward samples i will show you the image so this is cryptococcus neoforms so this cryptococcus neoform fungi has the capsule so this capsule will be bright halo in see can you see this bright halo around the yeast cell so this is the capsule and this capsule is uh, visualized by staining the background 
so the background black color is given by indian ink so these are called negative stains negative stains will stain the background of the microscope so that we can easily visualize the sample so these are the four uh, methods to see under di direct microscopy so what are those koh preparation or uh, potassium hydroxide preparation then koh with kalkofor or uh, gram staining or indian ink preparation by these four methods we can able to see the direct microscopy of the fungi so let us see how this uh, koh preparation prepared so on a di direct microscopy first one is koh preparation so first we will take the specimen on a clean glass slide and we will add 10 drops of koh 10 drops of 10 percent koh and we will add a cover slip and we will heat it slightly and we will observe under the microscope so that you can able to see different types of yeast cells and high phase this high phase can be septate high phase or a septate high phase can be visualized on the microscope then we have koh with kalkofor so in koh with kalkofor uh, before that so we can also see different other types of hyphae those include spiral hyphae racket mycelium and plavic chandelier mycelium can also be observed under koh preparation okay then coming to your koh with kalkofor so in koh with kalkofor we will add this kalkofor white solution to the koh potassium hydroxide solution so that the fungi will uh, visualize like a bright green under uv microscope so can we so that we can easily visualize the fungi so this is the advantage of koh with kalko for white okay then we have the third one is gram staining so as i said some yeast cells are gram positive or gram negative in order to find that gram positive yeast cells we will go for gram staining for example your candida albicans so candida albicans is a gram positive yeast cells see here you can see a positive blue color then last and final is your Indian ink preparation. So Indian ink preparation may be used for detection capsulated yeast cells. So capsulated yeast cells such as cryptococcus neoforms, which is a brain infection. Cryptococcus neoforms will affect your brain leading to brain injury and fatal death also can occur. So this can be visualized. So this is your cryptococcus neoforms, which is seen under Indian ink preparation. And I will show you the infection of the brain, which is caused due to cryptococcus neoforms. So this is the picture of brain and what the white dots, whatever you are seeing here are the colonies of your cryptococcus neoform fungus. So it started growing within the brain. So I need not to say what is the fate of this person. Obviously he will die. So these are the four methods of direct microscopic observations of fungi. Then next we are going to see the cultures. So how we are going to culture this fungus uh, fungal samples so we can go for two preparations for culturing so first one is uh, sd agar we can grow this uh, fungal culture in sd agar and that can be visualized under lactophenol cotton blue mount so the the growth the grown fungal can be observed under lactophenol cotton blue so these are the two cultures we have so first let us see sda culture so this is sda culture and is after growth we can able to see under LPCB, lactophenol cotton blue. So the, the pictures of lactophenol cotton blue will be really uh, beautiful. I will show you the pictures. So see, so this is your conidiophore. So this is a real conidiophore picture, which is seen under LPCB, which we are going to perform in laboratory. Even you can also observe in our lab. So this is your LPCB. So this is the diagram and see, it is just like the diagram. So this is how your LPCB mount looks like. So let us see what is the composition and uh, properties of this SD agar. So coming to your SDA agar, SDA means so agros dextrose agar. So in this agar, we are, we are having three important ingredients. Three important composition is uh, composed in this SD agar. What are those three? So first one is chlorum phenicol. So this chlorum, chlorum phenicol will suppress the contaminating bacteria. So we need only fungal growth. We doesn't need any bacterial growth in the culture, right? So the, in order to prevent that bacterial growth, we are using this chlorum phenicol. This chlorum phenicol will suppress the contaminating bacteria. Then we will add cyclohexamide. This cyclohexamide will suppress the growth of contaminating bacteria. See, uh, I'm sorry, contaminating fungi. Fungi is everywhere in the environment. So we doesn't need all the normal fungi to grow in our lab. We need only the clinically important medical fungi to grow. 
So in order to suppress this contaminating fungi, we will add cyclohexamide. And for getting specific medical fungus growth, we will add brain heart infusion and blood with antibiotics. So that we will get the primary isolation of fungi, the fungi which we designed to get. So these are the three, com the three components present in Sargros Destros agar. What are those three? Chloramphenicol, cyclohexamides and brain heart infusion agar are the uh, constituents of your SDA agar. Then after this, the growth, you will see growth like this. So in SDA agar, you will see fungal growth. This fungal growth can be various, uh, the colony morphology and the color of the colony will be varied depending upon the type of fungus it is growing. So depending upon the mor colony morphology, growth and color, we can able to uh, say what kind of fungus it is. We can able to diagnose it. So this is about fungus, uh, SD agar. Then let us see about cotton, lactophenol cotton blue. So in lactophenol cotton blue, cotton blue, what we are doing, we will take a glass light and we will add lactophenol cotton blue solution and we will cover it with a uh, cover slip and we will observe on the microscope. Then you can able to see these beautiful pictures of fungus. So what is the advantage of LPCB means? This LPCB won't destroy fungal morphology. We need not to destroy the fungal morphology. We can see the true uh, morphology of the fungus. That is the major advantage of LPCB. Okay. Then next and last and finally is our tissue sections. So sometimes this fungi will infect deep into the skin and they will infect the deeper organs. So that time what we will do is we will take a portion, a small biopsy of that skin and we will go for uh, section cutting and we will absorb under the, we will stain that section by periodic acid ship or some special stains to see fungus growth. So let me show you one fungal infection which is a mycetoma. That is very common in South India, particularly in Tamil Nadu. So mycetoma looks like this. So it is a fungal infection which happens, which uh, grow in the foot. So it is also called uh, Madurai food. So Madurai food means first time it is discovered in Madurai. So that is why they are called as Madurai food, which is a uh, fungal infection that is growing within the subcutaneous of the skin. So this leads to this fungal infection. So how we can determine this is a fungal infection? So we will take a biopsy, a part, a part, a biopsy of the skin, and we will go for pass staining in the slide. Then we will be able to diagnose as yes, this is mycetoma infection. So that's that is all about your uh, laboratory diagnosis of fungi. A quick recap. So what we learned in this lesson. So here we discussed about uh, laboratory diagnosis of fungi. So first we discussed the specimen collection. Then we discussed the laboratory diagnosis. In laboratory diagnosis, we have direct microscopy, culturing and tissue sections. So first let us see direct microscopy. In direct microscopy, we have KOH preparation. Then we have KOH with Colcofor. Then we have gram staining and we have immuning preparation. Then we discussed about KOH. Directly you will take a glass light and you will add a drop of KOH. You will keep a, a cover slip. You will heat it and you will observe on the microscope. Then you have KOH with Colcofor, where we will add Colcofor white solution so that the, micro, the fungi will be visible bright in the UV microscope. So this is the advantage of KOH with Colcofor. Then we discussed gram positive gram staining to detect gram positive fungi. And we also discussed about Indian ink preparation, which is a negative stain that is used for detecting capsulated my, uh, fungal fungus yeast, such as Cryptococcus neoforms, which is a brain infection brain fungal infections. Then we discussed about culture. In culture, we discussed the SDA culture and LPCB, lactophenol cotton blue. So SDA, SDA, SDA culture is a highly specific culture for growing fungus. Then this fungal growth can be determined by LPCB mount. So in LPCB mount, you will see our beautiful fungal images. So in uh, SDA culture, we have three important constituents, chloramphenicol, which will suppress the contaminating bacteria. Then it has cyclohexamide, which will suppress the growth of contaminated fungi and it has brain heart infusion and blood and antibiotics for isolation of primary fungus. After that, we will get the growth and the growth can be determined by different, the, the morphology of the colony, color of the colony. We can able to say what kind of fungus we got. Then we have LPCB. In LPCB, we will add uh, LP lactophenol cotton blue. Then you will see your fungal morphologies. And last and finally is your tissue sections. So sometimes we will go for tissue sections like your motherella mystomy. Then we will proceed for special staining to observe what kind of fungus 
infection it is so this is all about your laboratory diagnosis of fungi so see you in the next lecture students thank you